Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. This is The End Times, and today's teaching is entitled, The Lesson of the Fig Tree. Let us read Luke chapter 13, verse 6 through 9. And he told this parable, A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and put on manure. Then, if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. In prophecy, the fig tree always represents Israel, and Israel is always represented by the fig tree. Look at the parable that Jesus told. A man, meaning God, or Jesus in particular, had a vineyard. Now, a vineyard is a place where grapes are planted and grown for the purpose of harvesting. But this particular vineyard owner planted a fig tree in his vineyard, which is highly unusual. No one plants a fig tree in his vineyard, but nonetheless, this vineyard owner did. The problem was, however, that the fig tree would not bear fruit. He came seeking fruit for how long? Three years. That's a very specific number of years. This number will become more important in our study later on. It might seem superficial now, but it'll make sense later. The owner of the vineyard said to the vine dresser, let's cut down this fig tree since it won't bear fruit. It is only taking up space and using up ground for no good reason. Now in scripture, Jesus identifies the vine dresser. Look at John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. So Jesus identifies the father as the vine dresser, and the father says, No, don't cut down the fig tree just yet. Leave it for the sake of my servant Abraham, and for my servant Isaac, and for my servant Jacob. So it's traditionally taught that Jesus' earthly ministry lasted three and a half years. Remember the time Jesus said that the owner came to check for fruit? Three years. Now, let's skip ahead to the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. Mark chapter 11, verse 12 through 14. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. This is the day after the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Jesus was at the end of his three-year ministry, the same amount of time that the vineyard owner came looking for fruit from his fig tree. Jesus had come to Jerusalem for fruit. This was their last opportunity to produce fruit. The crowd had accepted him, but the religious leaders, despite all the signs he had performed, still rejected him and caused the fig tree to be barren. At first glance, it seems like Jesus was being unreasonable with the fig tree. There's a lesson to be learned here. Look at what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 32 and 33. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. So Jesus claims that there is a lesson to be learned, and not just a lesson, but a lesson about the end times and his return. Let's go back to the cursing of the fig tree. But first, let's see what Paul says about Israel and see if it fits in. Romans chapter 11, verse 7 through 11. But then, Israel failed to obtain what it was seeking. The elect obtained it, but the rest were hardened. As it is written, God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes that would not see and ears that would not hear, down to this very day. And David says, Let their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a retribution for them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see, 
and bend their backs forever. So I ask, did they stumble in order that they might fall? By no means. Rather, through their trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles, so as to make Israel jealous. The scripture we just read said that Jesus found no fruit on the fig tree because it was not the season for it, meaning it was not Israel's season to bear fruit. They were experiencing a temporary hardening because it was the season of the Gentiles. Let's go back to Mark 11 and compare what happened. Mark chapter 11, verse 20 and 21. And they passed by in the morning. They saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. Jesus had gone back to Jerusalem looking for fruit from the fig tree and found none. Also, I want you to understand he was on his way to die on the cross right there in Jerusalem that very week. This was literally their last chance to produce fruit. He went looking, but only found opposition. He had no other choice now but to fulfill scripture. But did they stumble permanently as to never recover? No, it was only a temporary hardening to give way to the time of the Gentiles. Jesus left them with this hope. He said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 32, from the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. Summer is indicative of the harvest. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 5 says, He who gathers in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who brings shame. Jeremiah 40.10 says, As for me, I will dwell in Mizpah, to represent you before the Chaldeans who will come to us. But as for you, gather wine and summer fruits and oil and store them in your vessels and dwell in your cities that you have taken. Jeremiah also laments in Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 20, the harvest is past, the summer is ended and we are not saved. Summer is a time of harvest and harvest preparation which again is symbolic of the end times. So the lesson of the fig tree is this. When you see the fig tree that has temporarily stumbled begin to become tender and put out leaves again, look up, thy redemption draweth nigh. In other words, when you see Israel and the Jewish people turn to Jesus and accept them as their long-awaited promised Messiah, you know that his return is near, even at the door. I want you to look at this beautiful description of the rapture and the blooming of the fig tree in the Song of Solomon. Also, this scripture talks about the winter passing. And for more information on that, see our video, Winter and the End Times, under our, our The End Times category. Now, let us read the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 10 through 13. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love my beautiful one, come away. For behold, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, and the time of singing has come. The voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree ripens its figs, and the vine are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. The bridegroom, which is Jesus, is saying, look, the fig tree is ripening its figs and the vine is blossoming and they too are bearing fruit. Even though they are both the bride of Christ, still Jesus differentiates between the two. The reason for the separation of the two? Because Jesus is making a note that Israel is no longer under a temporary hardening. The long, hard winter is over. The rain is gone. The curse is reversed. Look around. More and more Jewish people or Israelis are coming to Jesus. The fig tree is beginning to bloom. So get your house in order and prepare to meet your Savior. He is on his way back to get us. I'm Kenny Yates. 
withhold the hope and this has been the lesson of the fig tree thank you so much for joining us if you liked this video would you please press the like button subscribe and share this video it helps us to bring you more videos like this one thank you be blessed and stay blessed